Hello everyone, Delta One here. Alright, I have a interesting... Well, it's not really interesting. It's interesting to people that don't know. Um, an interesting topic. Um, and it's particularly um, about... I don't know how to put it. Uh, <laughs> It's a mistake that I'm pretty sure some of us have done all the time. Jesus Christ, the sun's high. Sorry, it's really bright and I can't see if there's a car behind me or not. A car coming really well or not. Which I don't even think you can even see me too well. I don't know. Um, but it's an interesting topic nonetheless. Um, it's something we've all done it. We've, if you have owned a car and you drive, you've done it at least once in your life. Um... Pretty much, you've gotten in your car, you started it, either you've done, you're doing something else while you're in your car, or you have to get out of it, go back and check to see if you've locked the door, or whatnot, and you come back and you um, get in, belt up, and decide to, you know, turn the key again, and you turn the ignition, and you get this really nerve-crunching grinding noise. Um, I'm trying to figure out what this person's doing. Um, because they just cut me off to begin with. And now they're driving on the wrong side of the road. Yeah, they're driving on the wrong side of the road now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is happening. This is happening right now. So, ending up a brake light out. Um, what, what, what's happening when this hat just completely ran it? What happens when, uh, when you do this and what is it? All right. For, for, for anyone that knows, just completely running all of them. Oh my God. Um, but what happens when you turn your ignition is it sends a signal to, well, a power signal to an ignition coil that is on the, um, or a relay, whichever one you want to call it, a coil or the relay, and it pulls in a little contactor. In most cases, this is what it does: pulls in a little contactor, and it it does two things. It starts the it starts the rotation of this motor for the start your car, and it also sends a uh, I want to say it's like a mechanism. I can't remember what it's called. Um, basically, the gears on your uh, starter do not consistently come into contact with the flywheel, which is the thing, or, the, or flex plate, depending on if it's manual or automatic. It is not consistently attached or connected to or touching this um, this part. It's, just, it's not touching it all the way, all the time. But what it is doing is the actual rod that actually sticks out does in fact sits in front of your flywheel or flex plate it doesn't make contact there's a gear that goes forward and back when it's energized it goes forward towards the flywheel makes contact with the flywheel or flex plate and rotates it all right when you turn your key on even though the car is started in older cars jesus christ it's hot in older cars it doesn't know the car is still running. You turn the key. Okay, I'm going to try to start it. Um, here's the thing. Your starter cannot... <laughs> your starter cannot keep up with your engine's rotation. It can't. It's not designed to. So when you turn your key and it goes out, one or two things happens. It's either trying to make make it into the little gears to make connection and it's rubbing against the actual flywheel or b it's actually getting to it and the speed of your starter is slowing it down and grinding you know either way it's bad well in newer cars like um i don't know if my mine does it i don't know i know in the 14 ram uh it won't do it with the wireless ignition, um, with the key fob, it doesn't do it. Um, with the um, with my Nissan Pathfinder, which has a skim key, 
um, which is a chip and a key, it will do it. Um, my, I said my second one. My RAM, this RAM is a 2003 1500. It doesn't have a chip and a key. It will start it. So will the uh, skim key. It starts it in the, na in the Pathfinder. But the fob key in the 14 will not do it. You stick it in there, it turns, it starts. You try to do it again, it will not do it. It'll, I don't know if it'll beep or what. I haven't, I haven't actually tried to do it twice. Um, I do know it will um, turn off the lights like it's trying to start, but it, it's not actually trying to start it. Um, and that's because there's, it's always monitoring. Yay. Really? Um, but it's always monitoring what everything else is doing. So if it sees the kick ignition in the run start position and it's already monitoring the engine in the run position for well, engine running, it will not try to start the engine. Well, in essence, technically this can't fail. In theory, if we lived in a perfect world, it can't fail. Um, but essentially what you lose by giving, you know, giving the computer the ability to stop you from doing that is you increase what can fail on your standard system, stand, standard starting system. You've got a key, you've got ignition, you've got a relay, and you got your, uh, coil or solenoid, yeah, solenoid coil that's down there on the starter. Uh, that's four things that can fail. Well, okay. On a skim key, there's four things that can fail. If it's not a skim key, there's three things. It's only the ignition, the coil, or the uh, relay. Uh, in, we're not counting the battery. This is obviously if the battery is good. We're not, obviously, we're not going to go with that because that's the first thing you should always check when I go with that. Jesus Christ, I thought I turned the heater off. Um, but if any one of those fails, it's a quick go to. Go to the battery, jump out the starter. Starter starts, okay. Go to the relay, does the relay click? No, it doesn't. If you um, jump 12 volts to the control side, if it's a 12 volt circuit, um, does it click the starter over on its own and try to start it? Now, here's the thing with that. You might need a tester depending on who makes it or not. And the reason for that is because sometimes the uh, relay will not give power to the uh, one side of the control side um, or even the load side if oh unless the uh, trucks actually I mean unless the ignitions actually on so essentially what you will have to do I'm trying to figure out where I want to park because I know if I park I don't want to park all the way down here. What time is it? Oh, that's right. He's off today. He's off today. All right. So I'm going to have to back in. Um, the way people park here is absolutely dreadful. It is. Um, but essentially, um, that's your diagnostic procedure for that. But here's the thing. If your, um, if your, um, on like my 14 Ram, with that, you have, well, hold on, let me do my fancy dancy back up in this full size truck next to this little bitty Toyota Corolla, which I literally freak the hell out of everybody that I park next to because I don't give a damn where I'm at. I'm going to park, I will park as close as I can in the front. Um, but essentially, he won't let me give me the key. Okay. But essentially, um, like with my RAM, you've got the wireless ignition module. You've got your fob key. You've got your wireless receiver. You've got your wiring that goes from the RF receiver to that. And you've also got your wiring that goes to the ECM. Um, if you have a skimmed PCM. Uh, that's five things that could go wrong. And here's the thing. Unlike with the standard starting system, knowing what is actually wrong with the system and fixing it is not as simple as it is with the old system. Whereas like with my situation, I have a PCM that has a, that has a skim system on it. Well, the correct way to fix this is you got to get a whole new P uh, PCM. 
Well, that's not completely apparent because the first thing you have to figure out is, is it the problem, the key or the wireless receiver, or is it the wind module? Um, and again, that's not apparent because it's all electrical. Something could be showing that it's working, but it's not actually working. Uh, that's a that's that's just the idea of what a uh, piece uh, computers do. They a computer will function all day long. Like for instance, you, your engine could be running rough, but you're you're still running. You can still drive it around. Um, and essentially, you could have a bad PCM that's not controlling the engine properly. Like it's not accepting an input from an O2 sensor because the actual internals of the PCM are bad. Well. Again, your engine's running, so you would not assume that it's the PCM, which is why when people take their car to the dealership and they tell them, you need a new PCM, well, the car's running. Why would I need a new PCM? Again, that's where you come into that. You don't know if it's that or not, whereas if it's the old ignition system, okay, if it don't start, okay, um, is it the starter, the relay, or the coil? Well, it, the starter is internal, so we're going to call it, the, when we say the coil, we're going to go with saying the starter as well, because... Uh, in most cases, the coil is part of the starter. In most cases. So we're going to say the starter, the relay, or the ignition switch. In most cases. Um, sometimes you will have an issue with the programming of your key. Sometimes. Um, but usually, if you have a key with a chip in it, you usually don't. Unless you do call some kind of issue with your key. Like you know, holding it to a really strong magnetic ass field or, um, soaking it in water. I mean, you, the soaking of water is for like, like I said, for keys like this, um, like these, um, water is not really much of a issue. Um, of course it is always an issue, but as like I said, it's not much of an issue. Um, your key fobs, they are, um, your regular keys, obviously, are not. But again, when you take away that ability to um, to mess up something, and your way of fixing it is to make it to where it can't mess up, whatever you put in place to actually stop that from happening also increases the chance of failure. So I'm gonna go because they're looking at me really crazy. Oh, they want me to come in. Why is he wearing a rain? Why is he wearing a rain suit? Why is he wearing a rain suit? Oh God, something happened. I will go. Peace.